evening, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in to an all-new episode of the Tarot Talk Show, only on the Parent Encounters Network. I'm your host, Rebecca Brown, broadcasting live from the beautiful hills of Northern California, and we have a new location. I'm so excited. I finally, I finally moved, and I've actually moved further up the mountain, so it's, it's good. Uh, thanks for hanging in there with us. And it just took me a little bit to get settled in and to get to get online. So I'm glad that we are back for an all new show. And you know that Tarot Tim is in Dover, Delaware, and he has, of course, joined me this evening. Hey, Tim. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, everybody. Looks good. Yeah, I'm excited. Anytime I can see tons of books, I'm happy. So there you go. That's just it. This place is so small. Like, it's so small. It's so small that, like I said, I told you before, this is like my desk is my dresser, and I'm literally sitting in the window. Like, it's, there's no room. Just enough room for my books. My books and my clothes and my my tarot decks. So, it's it's good. It's good. How was your week? How's it going? Oh, you know, we had uh, just dealing with all kinds of uh, the pre-Mercury retrograde discombobulation, but, you know, it had highs and lows. <laughs> it's like a little roller coaster getting there. Yes, it sure is. Um, but I think it's good. It's, it's a good thing. The retrograde brings can bring chaos, but I think also opportunities to work through that chaos and build a better boat, as they say. You know what I mean? Like, it really highlights the problems sometimes and that's what's needed to to build things stronger better take it all it, take I, it. I usually feel it more the week before than i do during the actual retrograde hmm. that's interesting <laughs> once the retrograde hits then it's like okay i'm fine but <laughs> it's just that chaos leading up to the switch right well i thought it was especially funny you know you and i were talking on the phone a few days ago and the call got dropped and it's like oh yeah typical mercury retrograde you know, BS. So it was good. <laughs> well, a few shows ago, Tim and I did an episode on everyday tarot card combinations. So these are combinations that people searched for, for topics that are ev like everyday things like love, money, um, just whatever. And so we had covered those on our episode. And during that episode, we'd said, you know, if you have a question about a certain tarot card combination, reach out to us and we can, uh, you know, it's it's always different when, when you're looking at a reading that's already happened and you don't know the exact context, but there's still a parallel between the cards and you can still pull out some relevant points. And so we asked the viewers and the readers of my blog, Everyday Tarot Card Combinations, to reach out if they have anything that they would like our input on. Well, we did receive a couple combinations, which I think is fantastic. So let me read this to you, Tim, and we will kind of roll with it. We'll open up the show that way. This one is from Christy. And she says, hi, I was wondering what a particular reading I did for myself meant. I did a three card reading, past, present, future, spread. The hermit showed for the past of the situation, then the queen of wands for the middle card and the outcome card was death. Could you please tell me what this combo means? I was asking where my relationship was headed with this guy I know. Thanks, but I have also done readings asking a particular question and it talked about a totally different situation. So I think that she's, that to end on that, I think that she's just acknowledging that, yes, sometimes you ask the cards one thing and it answers totally different. However, let's just roll with those three cards in the context of the question. Sound good? Okay, so we have the Hermit for the past, the Queen of Wands for the present, and the outcome is for the, uh, the outcome card was death. Okay, so we have those three contexts. Where is my relationship headed with this guy I know? Well, it looks like it's um, it's a learning curve for her, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, she already knows. Obviously, that hermit's up there. So she's been introspective and been whatever. I think the, the relationship's actually brought her out of herself and forced her to um, start reclaiming her own stuff because that queen of wands 
is all about her own sexuality, her own life, her own, you know, just embracing herself. Um, once she does that fully, then she may no longer need this guy because now she's in a position to actually start a new, feels like more equal relationship. Mm -hmm. The relationship, it doesn't feel equal to me. There's something skewed about it. Oh, this one, like with this guy, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I like this three card pull for this. Oh, card. yeah. This is great. Um, there, yeah, there is such a parallel, not a parallel, um, such a difference between the energy of the hermit and the queen of wands. Yeah. Like you said, one is very introspective and isolated um, and just really going, it's, yeah, it's about going deep. Queen of Wands, you know, dynamic, um, aggressive even, you know what I mean? Like confident, I should say, confident. Maybe that's a better word um, for sure. So, yeah, coming out of that darkness, coming out of that shell. Um, so, yeah, I believe that it reflects that this is at least thought out somewhat because going through the process of the hermit. Um, that being said, I feel like there's some maybe a little bit of, if, I don't know, the Queen of Wands feels a little bit reckless to me in a way in the in this position is the present um but it could be fun yeah it could be something fun um well it almost feels like enjoy it just yeah. mm -hmm. don't put all your eggs in that basket you know so yeah so where is the relationship headed being the question so it's headed, you know, the outcome is the death card, transition, transformation, um, something different. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I think that it could be fun. It could be something that's transformative in some way. You know, like maybe this is the guy who breaks the dry spell that was the hermit. You know what I mean? Right. Which is, which is a good thing because I feel like, yeah, the Queen of Wands in that present position, that confidence, that being self-assured, um, it's a good thing. Um, lasting, I, my, my first instinct is no, because there's so much yeah. that comes after, um, this card. And honestly, I mean, if you even look at it, like in a literal way, like death is an ending, like, like the end, you know, like nothing, nothing's after in, in a sense. So I feel like that's something like long-term or lasting, but could be transformative, could break, could break the dry spell. Sure. Why yeah. Yeah, he he may not be Mr. Right, but you know, you can enjoy Mr. Right now for a while. Yes. <laughs> because it feels like right now it's actually fun. But that's because she, she was in that hermit mode for so long. Mm -hmm. You know? So sow some wild oats. Have some fun. Don't worry so much about where it's going. Just live the present moment. Right. Yeah. Because the future will take care of itself. Right. So I like it. And there's two majors in this line, too. Like you have two out of three cards are majors. So that's significant. Um, so, yeah, I think this will be transformative, at least, and give her something to think about, even if it is fun. It's so I think it's a good thing. It feel like it feels good to me. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yes. Very nice. I think so. All right. And we have another one here. Let's see what else I got. This one is from... From Vanessa, and this is a four-card draw, if we can keep it straight here. <laughs> you might want to write it down to him because I, yeah. I'm, I'm at least reading it. Okay, so my name is Vanessa. I found your page not too long ago. Um, I started learning tarot two months ago. I am doing the card of the day, and three or four cards draw, and then I look at their meaning, and I try to make sense of it. Um, till now, every day is accurate. It's amazing how the tarot can show the way I feel and what's going to come up during the day. So I want to ask you something. Today I did a four-card spread, and this is what I got. And I'm assuming she's not using positions. I mean, she didn't put them here. So I think it's just a four-card energy of the day kind of thing. Um, six of Swords, the World, Six of Wands, and Two of Hearts, um, which I assume is Cups. I'm not sure what deck she's using. How can I combine them, and how do they affect each other? Thanks a lot, Vanessa. 
Well, thank you for your inquiry, Vanessa, and thanks for reading the blog. Um, it's awesome you're doing a card of the day. Uh, that's definitely a great way to learn to learn tarot. So, Tim, what do you do? You want to think on this a minute? Because I mean, I've had a chance at least to formulate some ideas. So it's up to you. Do you want me to go first? Oh uh, yeah, you can go first. Okay. Um, well, another thing, and I wanted to bring this up with the three carter that we just did um, for Christy and I want to address it in this one also, is I don't know what deck that they are using, but one of the things that I think is always helpful when you're combining the cards is um, just to go off of it intuitively and then to look at what is actually happening in the picture itself. Like, is your eye drawn to a certain thing? Like, do are the colors changing? Um, maybe something changes and becomes something else so it's helpful to take a look at what is literally happening in happening in the pictures what are the people doing where are they looking and combine those images to tell a story um so i just wanted to put that out there um so with this four carter you you've got a lot of movement with these um you've got the swords and the wands that's pretty that's pretty fast um and the world also turns, so I feel like there's also movement here. Um, so yeah, there's movement with these cards, and I feel like it's all kind of building to the two of hearts in the last um, position. So things are moving with this situation. So it could be, I don't know if she was reading for just the day ahead. Um, I assume so, the energy during the day. It feels very fast to me, very fast. Um, and the Six of Swords can be kind of a heavy card, mm -hmm. I feel like, about moving, moving forward, leaving the past. Um, so to have the Six of Swords combined with the world, I think, is really cool because it's like you're going off on this journey and the world is opening up to you. Um, and as a major, the world is a great card to pull, especially in a little card draw. So I love that. Um, Six of Wands, often the card of victory. Um, it's it's just a great card. There's such a, a transition from that heaviness of the Six of Swords to this opening and this victory of the Six of Wands. And then the Two of Hearts, to me, I feel like that's Two of Cups, Two of Hearts, is blending. Like it's blending, balance. Um, emotionally, it's balanced and content, happy even. So... I feel like, yeah, there's the situation moving out of this period of sadness into like a brighter, successful place. What are your thoughts? Well, it, it, I definitely feel the movement of it. Um, and especially with, with my deck, um, cause I'm using Robin Wood, the sixes are both moving. Mm -hmm. Um, it feels like maybe that she's taken on stuff that really wasn't her stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like it's a responsibility that she stepped up for, but it feels like that that actually opened a doorway for her. Sometimes when you step up and you let things happen energetically, the universe recognizes that mm -hmm. and they, they'll throw them doors wide open and that's the reward. You know, you took the responsibility, you stepped up, you asked for it. And now you've got all these opportunities that come off of that. Um, and I feel like it, it's very positive, you know, but it's definitely um, something that it feels happy. It feels good. It feels like a sense of accomplishment, like um, something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. So not sure what she was doing, but it feels like, She's doing it well. I think so. Like I said, I don't know if this is a simple four-carder just for the energy ahead or if it's like just a general, what do I need to know right now in the moment thing. But yeah, this feels very positive. And I like what you had to say about the swords kind of being that responsibility that we take on. Because I agree. I think that the, well, and the, it makes, the swords cards make me think of, um, that they pull in a way from justice in that major arcana line and justice sometimes it's called it's called karma and not not like pop 
culture karma, which drives me insane. Like I hate it when people like refer to karma in that way. You know what I mean? Like it drives me insane because really karma is, is responsibility. It's that responsibility that you mm-hmm. decide to take on. It's the cosmic design. Like it's so much deeper than, um, it's, Oh, it's good karma. If you, I don't know, like pick up trash on the side of the road. Like it's, it's so much deeper than that and bigger than that. And so the source, yes, absolutely. You have that karmic responsibility, those heavy burdens that we signed on to shoulder. And you're right. Like when you're in the flow, when you accept that responsibility, things, yeah, things open up, things, things happen. It almost feels like to me that the, the six of swords in the world are actually what's happening right now. And that she's right on the cusp of the success and the, which is why she feels kind of uncertain because she's not sure. It's like, oh my God, what have I done? You know, (laughs) it feels like she's waiting to see what happens. But yeah, I think it's, it's definitely a positive outcome. Right. I love it. You know, of course you get into the, those, the two of cups and that stuff. And I mean, that's, it doesn't feel like, you know doesn't feel like small potatoes to me. And with this world card, it feels like something big in her life. Yeah, it's an opening. It's an opening. It's a rebirth, even. Um, and it's it's funny you mentioned karma because it's almost, you know, it's, it's, it's like a universal agreement. It's going to change her life. It's going to change her direction. It feels like in a positive way that maybe she didn't think was possible before. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, you know, when you're going into the sixes, you're coming out of the fives, and the fives are not fun. They aren't, no. That's all the change and turmoil and the issues and and just, oh, yeah. Imbalance and, yeah, just, diff- like, difficulty. Um, yeah. But it, it, that's also, I mean, in a very real sense, she may have actually been burning off some karmic debt. Mm-hmm. you know That's, right absolutely and so it, it feels like that it it's just allowing things to um to move and it's definitely forward momentum mm-hmm. absolutely you know, as opposed to she's not doing a big it doesn't feel like she's just starting over with a big circle like you know no i agree there's a lot of movement in these cards um and i love that and I also feel that, I mean, these sixes, you've got two of them here, and they really pull from the six in the tarot, the lovers, all about that blending of the opposites, mm-hmm. um, that well, counts. Even with the, uh, I'll show everybody, with the world card for my deck with the Robin Wood, I mean, she is jumping through that, you know, opening, open arms, full motion, ready to take it on. So, yeah. It's, it feels exciting. I think so. And I, I love the world card um, for this. Because, yeah, it's that opening, that rebirth. And it's, yeah, very scary because, yeah, you're jumping out. You're jumping out beyond Orion, you know, into this, like, dark hole. But it's it takes a lot of faith and a lot of strength. Um, and it leads to something good. Yeah, the six of, the, six of wands. So I really, I really like that. I'm looking for the world card in, in my... Morgan Greer here. I have to find it. I mean, it's very similar, but yeah, I love the I love that movement. Well, and I feel that this also really sets sets it up nicely for um, what is to come, which is of course more challenge. That's how we learn. Which is you know the sevens in the tarot. The sevens aren't easy either. The fives are difficult, and the sevens, the, yeah, the sevens are hard also. Yeah. But I don't know how to. The sevens, you kind of you understand it a little more. I think when you get to the sevens, because the fives, it, even though you kind of should know it's coming. Uh huh. Yeah. I love that one. I love it. It's like the fives just feel, that's when you feel the full brunt of the, the change and the chaos. I think when the fives hit, you know, because the fours, you're kind of in the moment and yeah, you may have a sense that the storm's brewing, but you're not really paying attention yet. (laughs) Right. Well, absolutely. Well, the, I think there's like, there's a certain comfort in the force. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And to me, it's, you know, it's pulling from the emperor, the four and the tarot. You get used to your box and your structure and your routine and you're comfortable. It's all, it's definitely being in the comfort zone. And then you're right. The fives introduce that new variable, that new element that are going to push you to the next level. But it sucks. Like it sucks. You know, <laughs> like I said, it's like the, the retrograde, you know, we get comfortable doing our stuff and then the retrograde comes to kind of push us out beyond that. So we can, like I said, build a better boat, you know, mm -hmm. uh, exactly. That's, that's the fives. But then we find the rebalance and the blending with the six. And then we're, we're much wiser. I like that for the sevens. Like you said, you're a little wiser. You're a little more on top of your game. Like you're ready for the next level. Um, for me, I feel like when the sevens have come up in my readings and I know that something's kind of on the horizon, I feel like the sevens are very, they're hard but you learn a lot from them. You learn a lot from the fives. But for me, I feel like the sevens have really taught me some hard lessons, like especially the seven of swords. I did not know what it was like to be stabbed in the back until I had like a very seven of swords situation. And the cards reflected that. And at first, you know, like, oh, no, that's like, I know who my friends are. No problem. La, la, la. Nobody's like mean like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But people are. <laughs> and it was a very Seven of Swords lesson. So it's definitely a little sharper for that one. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's all it's all about growing and learning. Yeah, I get totally tickled. Like I said, when everyone does the, you know, the Andy Warhol version of karma. <laughs> I also love how some of the, which has nothing to do with the topic, but how some people are so so mean and does so such shady, horrible things, but then they're the first ones who totally don't get what they're doing, but they'll do the whole namaste to you. And it's like, yeah, bite me. <laughs> it's like saying something sweet to cover your hideousness doesn't make it less hideous. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, I think she's going to have some fun. I'll be interested. Uh, uh, let us know how this applied to you when you see this, because uh, we want to know where that two winds up going. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, it's important to note also the, just to know the meanings and everything, but also to literally look at what's going on in the cards. Um, yeah. It's probably that's more important, actually. So um, I just wanted to, to mention that. So good. Um, what else have we got? So I thought that we would do a little exercise. I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know. It just kind of popped into my head because I was going crazy because I couldn't find, um, my necklace, like the one I wear, it's this big old huge moonstone. I wear it all the time. I could not find it. It's very, very much, right? And so, so I'm looking everywhere and it kind of got me to thinking and I almost pulled my cards out. Like that's how <laughs> crazy I was going. It would have got me to thinking that one of the things, I don't know about you, but one of the things I get asked is lost and found question. Somebody can't find something. Um, it's, yeah. So I don't know. Have you gotten these questions before in a reading? I haven't, it's not a, an item. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Well, so I thought we would tackle it and see. Because so before we went on air, I asked you to hide something. And um, I've hidden something for you. And we don't know what it is. We don't know where it is. But I thought that we would read, like, pull a few cards and see if we could each kind of get close. Okay. So do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, you can humiliate yourself first. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to totally suck at this, but you never know. <laughs> well, you never know. We'll see what comes out. We'll just see. We'll just play with it. And that's, yeah. you know, that's, I think that's a big I thing. I am embarrassing myself anyway, so I don't care. Just have fun with it. We'll play with it. Who knows? Um, okay, so you're the client. I'm the reader. You've just lost your whatever. I'm going to see if I can help you pinpoint where it is. All right. I don't 
like a couple of cards on my lap. That's how much space I don't have. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing the same thing. So. Honey, all right. One more go. All right. All right, sir. Let me see if I can give you some guidance. Okay. Hmm, justice. Okay. The devil. <laughs> Ooh, the three of swords. Okay, I'm going to pull one more. The hanged man. Well, you got three out of four majors. Hmm. Is this something significant to you? I mean, given, you know, let's, let's assume you've already told me what it is, but I don't know what it is that you actually hit. Is it important to you? Like, does it matter? Oh, yeah. The thing you hid, like it is, it means something to you? Okay. Um, yeah, I felt like this is something that matters. Um, three majors and a four card draw. Yeah, that's, that matters. Um, they got some swords here. I feel like it could be somewhere around like communication, things that are you use for communication. Like, so I would check like by the phone, on the TV, on the bookcase even. Books, communication, writing. Um, is it shiny? <laughs> You're thinking. I, I'd say it's happy. It's happy, but it's not shiny? Um, okay. There could be a shiny <laughs> connection there. Okay. <laughs> um... And it feels up high. It feels high to me. Like, not at eye level or on the floor. <laughs> I, just, I just dropped my cards. Um, yeah. Let's, um, hmm. I keep wanting to do this. Like a big, like a big X. Like a big, I don't know. I don't even know what that means. Hmm. I don't know. Um... And it's in inside of something. Like I feel like it's it's inside of something. It's not out in like the open or just hung somewhere. It might like it might is this making sense? Is this resonating? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um Yeah. Yeah, I would just I feel like it's up high. Um I feel like it's near something that has to do with communication. Um it's, I keep getting shiny. I keep getting, I don't know. And then I keep wanting to do this. Like, I just feel like there's a parallel between the imagery on these cards. I feel like there's a big X. And there's, like, I don't know, shapes. Like, it's very, something's, I don't know. I don't know, Tim. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's important to you, what you've, what you've hidden. It's, like, it's significant. Um, yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. That's all I got. Okay. So we're going to. Yeah. Tell me what it is. Where you put it. And yeah. Do the reveal. Okay. Big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> Under a pillow that's on this little footstool I have by my laptop, I play my wow and okay. stuff on. Okay. So, there's your communication. <laughs> I thought it was high though. I was getting up high. Yeah. It I is, have... Well, here's the thing. It is uh, my commemorative clamshell CD of <laughs> Meet the Flintstones by the B-52s. So it's a collectible. <laughs> and I'm definitely into my collectibles. Um, well, and the B-52s, I mean, the name of the band itself, that is uh, a bomber. So that is definitely dealing oh, okay. with some hype. Um, and Kate Pearson, who is the main female lead, uh, is the one who sings Shiny Happy People. <laughs> hmm. I can buy it's shiny. It's just shiny. I don't know. I don't know what. <laughs> shiny, shiny. I don't know. Oh, that's funny. Okay, cool. And okay. it was hidden under a pillow. It was between a pillow and a footstool. So it was definitely under stuff. <laughs> yeah, it felt like it was in something. But yeah, I got, okay, so I didn't get the hug. Well, said the CD <laughs> itself, it, it is in... It's inside a uh, clamshell. 
<laughs> I like that. So you did pretty good, actually. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay, go for it. So I've hidden something. Is this something you've had for a while? Yes. Because it feels like there's time and seems like there's stuff that you associate it with. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. like it brings memories, good and bad. Because, yeah. Okay. That's resonating. Do you have any idea, like, as to... Oh, sorry, keep going. Well, it feels like, though... I don't know. It, it, it almost was like... It's something that uh, is easily moved because it doesn't feel heavy, like weighted down. It doesn't feel stationary, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Okay. Do you have any ideas to what room, where I could have, like, put it? Do you feel like it's inside, outside? I don't know, other than it feels like that, um, it feels like there's water close to it in some form. Okay. If not water, liquid. It feels fluid. Mm hmm You know? Because every card I got, there's, there's water there. Yeah, what are you pulling? Just I, got, I got the Four of Cups. Okay. Temperance, the Three of Wands, and the Six of Cups. Yeah. So there's a lot of, of water and emotion and stuff there. That's very interesting. Okay. It's, well, that's funny. Because I feel like you hit it this time, but I feel <laughs> like you've misplaced it before. Like, for real. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of ironic that you hit it now because I feel like before you've been like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like you were with your necklace kind of, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Was this a gift? Did mm -hmm. someone give it to you or was it a gift to yourself? It was a gift to myself. Very much so. Yeah. Okay. Because it feels, it feels important. Mm -hmm. And right. it feels like. Yeah, it, it's almost like a, I deserve this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it, you kind of rationalized getting it. <laughs> was it yeah. pricey? Yes. Yes, it, it was. pricey? Yeah, it feels pricey. <laughs> Not like crazy pricey, but yes. I mean, you know. Yeah. More, more than you would have normally spent for yourself. Right. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't feel like it's in my line of sight behind you. I feel uh -huh. like it's off camera. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. You no. Know? Because especially with this, with this three, <laughs> he's looking, he can't see it right now. It's like, Oh, where's that at? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, let me know when you're done. Yeah, because you're good. It's resonating so far. Good, good.
Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Well, well, I will go. After, it is. I have to go get it. It is out of the line of sight. Okay. <laughs> my here. Yes, I will run it. was is this other piece of jewelry that I bought that also occasionally does go missing. I have misplaced it before. Um, and it was in the bathroom okay. like on the sink. So there's the water part of it. Yeah. On the sink near water for sure. All um, right. Yeah. In this box that I put. So yeah, it's this um Ooh, pretty piece. Labradorite that I feel matches the moonstone. So, um, yeah. That looks like the necklace the old lady, it reminds me of the, the necklace the old lady threw into the ocean. <laughs> oh, the, in the Titanic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was a gift to myself. And I forget what, what your all of your questions were. But, yeah, a lot of it resonated. So, good, you helped me find it. Yeah. Good. Well, I definitely knew it wasn't something brand new because it was feeling like there was like history attached. Right. History. Yeah. Well, in jewelry, there's a lot of emotion too. With jewelry. Well, yeah. It's like, oh, I was wearing this the first time I did this. I got this when I did that. I was, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. I understand. I do the same thing with, with my stuff. You can look at um, stuff. Well, and even with the clamshell, that was like. I was so excited to get that. It's so silly. I, the little tiniest weird things make me happy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Very cool. All right. Yeah. So better than I thought I was going to do, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I liked it. It was good. Um, very good. And what else? Okay. Yeah. So lost and found. Um, I've had a couple questions before on... Um, where people, they've misplaced things or they're looking for things. Um, one reading I had, it wasn't the focus of the whole reading, but it definitely came up. Her father had passed and they were looking for his will because he apparently was, and this also registered in the cards, but he, he was a very meticulous man. Like he was all about details, all about taking care of the company and its people and, you know, and they couldn't believe that he would just not have a will. So they were trying to find it, could not find it, you know, so she asked me my opinion. And so what I was seeing, and it's unfortunate, she never um, got back to me and I haven't contacted her. So I hope they found it. Um, but she, um, so I was reading the cards and it, it came through to me that yes, there is a will. However, I drew, I remember drawing the world card and I felt that as it was very, um, like up in the, up in the ether, you know what I mean? Like World Wide web, online storage, it's on a drive somewhere. Like it's, you know, maybe not like a physical will, but I feel like it was very, yeah, up here somehow. Um, and everything. So I've had a couple questions um, like that. And, and so, yeah, they're, they're very interesting to do and they're fun. I think exercises like this are fun. Oh so yeah. They really work on the, and I like that they're totally, cause y'all, we do not rehearse this, talk about this, plan <laughs> this it is totally off the cuff. <laughs> and I like it that way. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Um, have you have you ever lost any tarot cards? Like, I have not lost tarot cards. Not at uh, all. Oh. No, but I am I am so afraid of losing one of my cards or whatever. I am totally anal about. Uh, they go back in the bag immediately. I gather them up immediately. I I just never. I I don't leave them laying around at all. Now, other stuff, oh, yeah, I, I lose parts of things all the time. That's probably why I'm so careful with the tarot. It's funny. Yeah. I, I've i only lost one card from one deck, and I can't find it worth anything. Like, I don't know where it is, um, which is surprising, yeah, just with because I'm kind of careless with my cards, actually. Like, I just, well, as you can see, they're all over the floor now because I dropped them. And then I've got them. Some of them are, like, on my altar. Some of them are, like, taped to my mirror. Some of them are just... 
scattered around. Like, I don't even know. So, um, but I've only ever lost one card and it was the four of pentacles, which is kind of ironic because that's all about retaining and holding on to <laughs> But hang on, hang on. <laughs> pentacles from my Rider Waite deck or my whatever, Waite Smith, whatever deck. And um, I don't know where it is. Like, I haven't been able to find it. So, yeah, I've got one deck missing a card. Hmm. So, in a way, it was like, well, what does that say? You know, when cards go missing. It's like, oh, what's that about? Yeah, well, it's good you figured out which card it was, so. Uh-huh. Yeah. And did you know right away or had it been missing for a while? Well, that's true. Like, had I actually done read? Um, no, I, I don't think it had been missing for a while. Yeah. Because usually I, well, I don't know. In a way, it's a good question. It's like, oh, maybe I don't always count my cards. But I like to put them in order, though, every so often after every so, you know, number of readings and everything. So I don't think it was that long. Um. Hmm. That's not a deck that I read professionally with, so that's good. But, yeah, it went missing. I I haven't used that one in a while. My old yeah. standby is the Robin Wood because it's just, it spoke to me when I picked it up. Well, and the, the deck itself, you know, it was a happy time. Mm-hmm. I was uh, apprenticing at an herb shop, and people were just lovely and they're still friends of mine to this day i don't have as much contact with them anymore since i don't live in florida but uh it was a a time of a lot of growth and opening and new possibilities and you know so the deck has happy memories for me yeah yeah that's great was that your first tarot deck the robin wood like what's your first tarot deck been my my first was the there was the rider Oh, it was the writer. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, I, I never read professionally with it. Uh-huh. Um, I was just very drawn to, as a matter of fact, when I, I came into the shop, they had got in a deck at the, the herb shops where I bought it. And um, Cecilia said, oh, yeah, I, I thought of you when I got, saw this deck. So, you know, you should look at it. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's great. It's a cute story. I bought my first tarot deck twice. Did I ever tell you this story? Mm, I don't think so. No, it's a good story. Like, it's it's a good story. So, my first deck was the Morgan Greer, and um, which is, of course, traditional Rider Waite symbolism. Um, it's a clone, basically. But I just, I love the deck. So, I bought the deck, and this was quite some time ago, um, probably 10 years ago. I was curious about tarot, just starting out, just learning. I was engaged at the time to a guy who really didn't like tarot. Like he was just very, <coughs> he was very ignorant about what it was and what it was about. And I don't mean that in a mean way. It's just he didn't know. You know, like he just he just didn't know. And so I ended up selling my deck and books to this used bookstore. Um, just. I don't even know what I was thinking. I don't want to get into it, you know, but, but it was a bad decision, obviously. And so, so I didn't study tarot for, you know, what, like a, a year, year and a half or so. Um, gave it up, basically. Didn't pursue it further. Um, the engagement fell apart, of course. And so about that time, I got back into this. Like, I felt that pull, you know? Like, when you know that you should be doing something and were really interested in it. So I took it up again, and I didn't have a whole lot of money. And I decided to go to the used bookstores looking for tarot materials and everything, like some used books and stuff. And so I went back to the place that I had originally sold, um the deck and books too. Now, mind you, this was like a year and a half, probably closer to two years later, you know? Um, So I found some books, just some other things. I'm checking out at the counter and it's this glass counter, like with a glass top. And then they've got all kinds of stuff inside, you know, all kinds of just random whatever. And I look down and there in the back corner is the deck of tarot cards that I had sold them a year and a half, two years ago. And I knew it was my deck because it had like this very distinctive handwritten 
um, like price sticker from the original store still on it. Like all of the wear was there. It was without question, like my deck. And it was just such a moment. Like I still kind of get chills because in that moment, I really felt like I had regained and rediscovered like this piece of myself. And like, they had waited there for me, like mm -hmm. all that, it was still there. And it was just an amazing moment. So I had to buy the deck again, of course. But but yeah, my very first deck, I bought it twice. Um, and I still have it, actually. Um, I no longer read with it because it's it's been through a lot, actually, the, you know, over the course of 10 years. But yeah, it's bought it twice. So that's a sign, you know, when the, the universe wants you to have something, do something when it's part of the design, it, it will happen, so. Oh, yeah. It, it'll find its way back to you even if you reject it. Yes. Right. Exactly. And so after that, it was like, yeah, I meant to do this. Like, this is meant to be. Um, and the rest is history. Now here, here I am. So. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's absolutely um, was meant. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't know where I bought my first deck. It's funny because I don't even, I don't remember if I bought it at the shop where I was taking a tarot class or if I bought it at the Barnes and Noble for the class. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but I remember distinctly the exact moment I bought the deck that matters. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other's just kind of it's like primer paint. It you know gets you ready, but not necessarily what you're going to stick with. Right. Oh, I like that. I like that term, primer, primer paint. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And I bought mine. It was from this little local store down in Colorado Springs, Heaven and Earth, which I don't think is there anymore. Um, and it's funny because when I, I went back to that shop because I wanted to tell them the story, you know, because I was shopping and then I wanted to tell them the story. And so I did. And the lady who owned the place, like she just laughed and she's like, oh, honey, don't ever give up anything for a man, you know. And it was it was funny. It was a funny moment. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had taken her advice into into the present, which I have not. It's still <laughs> clearly something I'm working on. But, yeah, it's, it was funny. It was a funny moment. Yeah, that's, oh, you get into that relationship stuff. That's what, and if you don't learn anything else from anything, everyone should remember this. A relationship should complement you. It does not complete you. I'm sorry, you're not here to meet your soulmate and be happy and never learn a blessed thing. You're here to have life experiences and to learn and burn off karmic debt and, you know, um, not that you can't meet someone that you'll be blissfully happy with for the rest of your life, but, you know, those are uh, gifts in themselves. Right. You know? <laughs> well, and I often go back to kind of what, and you have told me this before, just in our own private personal conversations, you were like, you know, you are like the cake. Like the, the, the amazing cake and whatever relationship you have or whatever is just the cherry on top of it. Like it's just, it complements. It maybe makes it a little more whatever, but it's not the main thing, you know. And I right. like, I often think about yeah. that analogy. It, it adds a little flavor, but it's not what sustains you. You are what sustains you. <laughs> right. And I like that. I like that. And I like cake. So I like that analogy <laughs> for sure. Yeah. That's like the the whole, um, which is one of my favorite books, movies, whatever, the whole MAME thing. Uh, Life's a banquet and most poor sons of bitches are starving to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's where you get into the whether if you're going to exist or if you're going to live. Because living is, it requires bravery and trust and uh, being open to change and, uh, you know, it's true. It, it takes a lot. Yeah. A lot of courage. Um, well, you kind of have to be proactive in your life and make it what you want. But most people are reactive. They wait till stuff happens. And that's, well, and I would never poo poo like people's well, prayers and everything, but, and it's wonderful to pray and wish for stuff. And, but you know, get up off your butt and mm -hmm. make it happen too. 
Oh, sure. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, and we're all guilty of that, of course, you know. Oh. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I think when we realize that we can create everything and that all is chosen, that that's very, that's, then it becomes empowering and we don't have to be yeah. uh, like victims and we don't have to be subject to our stuff. Like you, it doesn't have to be this way. Like you can break the cycle of whatever you can get out of it. Like you can, you know, but it's, it is hard and it's, 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 it's I have stopped posting anything that I deem negative on my Facebook at all because I keep getting, I kept getting into arguments with people that I thought were sensible and reasonable and <laughs> some things just tweak people and they are no longer sensible or reasonable. <laughs> yeah. So I just don't partake anymore and it's, interesting how much more I enjoy the little time I spend online and stuff when I'm not focusing on something ridiculous. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Well, we got to get out and live life, you know. I think social media is a great thing. I do, and I think a lot of people think it's responsible for us being disconnected from each other, which is maybe true. Like if you're behind your computer all day and living your life virtually and presenting this perfect image so people don't really get what your life is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because yeah. you can anybody and especially online, I think it's so much easier to look at what people are posting and to think, oh, their life is so much better than mine, which is it's probably not, you know, that's just what they're presenting. But on the other hand, I think it is, it has connected us. I mean, it's great that I can just text you because of social media or I can just do whatever. I think in some ways it's brought people together. But yeah, it's getting out and living, living life for sure. Not just being on my only problem I have with, and it, it's been a big problem for a lot of people. Um, so many people trust anything you say online. And, you know, they're meeting people online and going on these sites and, you know, that it's something like three out of four couples now come from online hookups. And that is so scary because you're the projected image of what you want to be online. It's not the reality of you being grumpy when you get up in the morning and you can't, no one can talk to you for the first two hours or, you know... And that's why all these people move across country, never having met, never having been with each other. And then they wind up on Jerry Springer because it's just a disaster. <laughs> well, that sounds like some seven of swords and seven of cups illusion, you know, like, oh, it's all is not as it appears to be. Yeah, that's what's funny, because it, it very much feels like um, online. It's it's a virtual world, but there's a lot of that. Um, it's like a glamour where mm -hmm. you've tricked people into believing that you're something totally else. And, you know, it, it's definitely a facade that doesn't hold up. Um, I think for shady people, that's made it really easy for them to get over on people. Because, you know, some people are really good at using whatever situation or technology is. Um, and gullible people... You know, there's life lessons in there, I suppose, but they're not fun. Oh, sure. Well, and we, we can all be, you know, we can all be easy. We can all be tricked, I think, honestly. And that's where that intuition comes in. Absolutely. To listen to that little voice, you know, no matter what the mind wants so badly to believe, to really, yeah, really listen yeah. to that intuition. So, Absolutely. Well, and speaking of social media and being online, be sure to check out tarotalk.com for all of our archived episodes and check out what we've got going on and upcoming. You can like our Facebook page, The Tarot Talk Show, on facebook.com and tweet us on the Twitter at The Tarot Talk Show. Do you have a tarot card combination that is tricky, confusing, puzzling? Send us a message and we just might feature it on the show. Tim, how can the viewers get in touch with you? Well, you can always get me at Timothy's Tarot on Facebook, or if you're in the Dover area, you can catch me at Bell Book and Candle, uh, 678-4545. 
All right. Well, thanks for another great hour. It's so good to see you. Thanks for joining me. And I'm your host, Rebecca Brown. You can get in touch with me by emailing the show, the Tarot Talk Show at gmail.com. Be sure to check out my websites, 365 days of tarot.com, everyday tarot card combinations.com, and my latest venture, tarotwow.com. That's all we have for this evening. Be sure and join us next week, same time, same place, Monday nights. 7 p.m. Pacific, no, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, only on the Parrot Encounters Network. Thanks for joining us, everyone. So mo to be. So mo to be. Let me read this to you, Tim, and we will kind of roll with it. We'll open up the show that way. This one is from Christy, and she says, Hi, I was wondering what a particular reading I did for myself meant. I did a three-card reading, past, present, future spread, the Hermit showed for the past of the situation, then the Queen of Wands for the middle card, and the outcome card was death. Could you please tell me what this combo means? I was asking where my relationship was headed with this guy I know. Thanks, but I have also done readings asking a particular question, and it talked about a totally different situation. So I think that she's, that to end on that, I think that she's just acknowledging that yes, Sometimes you ask the cards one thing and it answers totally different. However, let's just roll with those three cards in the context of the question. Sound good? Okay, yes. so we have the Hermit for the past, the Queen of Wands for the present, and the outcome is for the, uh, the outcome card was death. Okay, so we have those three context. Where is my relationship headed with this guy I know? Well, it looks like it's... Um... It's a learning curve for her, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, she already knows. Obviously, that hermit's up there. So she's been introspective and been whatever. I think the, the relationships actually brought her out of herself and forced her to um, start reclaiming her own stuff. Because that Queen of Wands is all about her own sexuality, her own life, her own, you know, just embracing herself. Um, once she does that fully, then she may no longer need this guy because now she's in a position to actually start a new, feels like more equal relationship. Mm -hmm. The relationship, it doesn't feel equal to me. There's something skewed about it. Oh, this one, like with this guy, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I agree. And I like this three card pull for this. Oh, yeah. This is great. Um, there, Yeah, there is such a parallel, not a parallel, um, such a difference between the energy of the hermit and the queen of wands. Yeah. Like you said, one is very introspective and isolated um, and just really going, it's, yeah, it's about going deep. Queen of Wands, you know, dynamic, um, aggressive even, you know what I mean? Like confident, I should say, confident. Maybe that's a better word um, for sure. So, yeah, coming out of that darkness, coming out of that shell. Um, so, yeah, I believe that it reflects that this is at least thought out somewhat because going through the process of the hermit. Um, that being said, I feel like there's some maybe a little bit of, if, I don't know, the Queen of Wands feels a little bit reckless to me in a way in the in this position is the present um but it could be fun yeah it could be something fun um well it almost feels like enjoy it just yeah. mm -hmm. don't put all your eggs in that basket you know so yeah so where is the relationship headed being the question so it's headed, you know, the outcome is the death card, transition, transformation, um, something different. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I think that it could be fun. It could be something that's transformative in some way. You know, like maybe this is the guy who breaks the dry spell that was the hermit. You know what I mean? Right. Which is, which is a good thing because I feel like, yeah, the Queen of Wands in that present position, that confidence, that being self-assured, um, it's a good thing. Um, lasting, I, my, my first instinct is no, because there's so much yeah. that comes after, um, this card. 
And honestly, I mean, if you even look at it like in a literal way, like death is an ending, like like the end, you know, like nothing, nothing's after in, in a sense. So I feel like that's something like long term or lasting, but could be transformative, could break, could break the dry spell. Sure. Why? Tuning in to an all new episode of the Tarot Talk Show, only on the Parent Encounters Network. I'm your host, Rebecca Brown, broadcasting live from the beautiful hills of Northern California. And we have a new location. I'm so excited. I finally I finally moved and I've actually moved further up the mountain. So it's it's good. Uh, thanks for hanging in there with us. And it just took me a little bit to get settled in and to get to get online. So I'm glad that we are back for an all new show. And you know that Tarot Tim is in Dover, Delaware, and he has, of course, joined me this evening. Hey, Tim. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, everybody. Looks good. Yeah, I'm excited. Anytime I can see tons of books, I'm happy. So there you go. <laughs> That's just it. This place is so small. Like, it's so small. It's so small that, like I said, I told you before, this is like my desk is my dresser, and I'm literally sitting in the window. Like, it's, there's no room. Just enough room for my books. My books and my clothes and my my tarot decks. So, it's it's good. It's good. How was your week? How's it going? Oh, you know, we had uh, just dealing with all kinds of uh, the pre-Mercury retrograde discombobulation, but, you know, it had highs and lows. <laughs> it's like a little roller coaster getting there. Yes, it sure is. Um, but I think it's good. It's, it's a good thing. The retrograde brings can bring chaos, but I think also opportunities to work through that chaos and build a better boat, as they say. You know what I mean? Like, it really highlights the problems sometimes and that's what's needed to to build things stronger better take it all it, take I, it. I usually feel it more the week before than i do during the actual retrograde mm, that's interesting <laughs> once the retrograde hits then it's like okay i'm fine but <laughs> it's just that chaos leading up to the switch right well i thought it was especially funny you know you and i were talking on the phone a few days ago and the call got dropped and it's like oh yeah typical mercury retrograde you know, BS. So it was good. <laughs> well, a few shows ago, Tim and I did an episode on everyday tarot card combinations. So these are combinations that people searched for, for topics that are ev like everyday things like love, money, um, just whatever. And so we had covered those on our episode. And during that episode, we'd said, you know, if you have a question about a certain tarot card combination, reach out to us and we can, uh, you know, it's, it's always different when, when you're looking at a reading that's already happened and you don't know the exact context, but there's still a parallel between the cards and you can still pull out some relevant points. And so we asked the viewers and the readers of my blog, Everyday Tarot Card Combinations, to reach out if they have anything that they would like our input on. Well, we did receive a couple combinations, which I think is fantastic. So... Yeah. I, yeah, he, may, he, he may not be Mr. Right, but, you know, you can enjoy Mr. Right now for a while. Yes. <laughs> 
Because it feels like right now it's actually fun. But that's because she, she was in that hermit mode for so long. Mm-hmm. You know? So sow yeah. some wild oats. Have some fun. Don't worry so much about where it's going. Just live the present moment. Right. Yeah. Because the future will take care of itself. Right. So I like it. And there's two majors in this line, too. Like, you have two out of three cards are majors. So that's significant. Um, so yeah, I think this will be transformative at least and give her something to think about, even if it is fun. It's so I think it's a good thing. It feel like it feels good to me. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yes. Very nice. I think so. All right. And we have another one here. Let's see what else I got. This one is from, from Vanessa. And this is a four card draw. If we can keep it straight here. <laughs> You might want to write it down, Jim, because I'm I'm at least reading it. Okay. So my name is Vanessa. I found your page not too long ago. Um, I started learning tarot two months ago. I am doing the card of the day and three or four cards draw. And then I look at their meaning and I try to make sense of it. Um, Till now, every day is accurate. It's amazing how the tarot can show the way I feel and what's going to come up during the day. So I want to ask you something. Today I did a four-card spread, and this is what I got. And I'm assuming she's not using positions. I mean, she didn't put them here. So I think it's just a four-card energy of the day kind of thing. Um, Six of Swords, the World, Six of Wands, and Two of Hearts, um, which I assume is Cups. I'm not sure what deck she's using. How can I combine them, and how do they affect each other? Thanks a lot, Vanessa. Well, thank you for your inquiry, Vanessa, and thanks for reading the blog. Um, It's awesome you're doing a card of the day. Uh, That's definitely 